At the bottom of the aquatic food chain are these tiny organisms, phytoplankton. Billions of them together form an important piece of the puzzle to global climate change. They produce half of the world's total oxygen and buffer the ocean carbon cycle. Phytoplankton are microscopic marine microbes, photosynthetic, that drift in the ocean. The number and type of phytoplankton species you have in the ocean is critical for understanding what the ecosystem is doing. The diversity of phytoplankton affects their role in regulating global climate. Scientists at the MIT Darwin Project want to find out how different species evolve over time and adapt to environmental changes. We still don't understand a lot of things about the planet that we live on, um, and especially the oceans. There's an awful lot of processes that we don't understand. Sophie Clayton is interested in studying localized population of phytoplankton at a high resolution. I want to map on a fine scale just what the ecology is of the phytoplankton at this front. October last year, I we had the opportunity to join a cruise um, that was going out to the Pacific, out of Japan. And the focus was to try and explore this very strong current that's off the coast of Japan called the Kurashio. It's kind of the equivalent of the Gulf Stream that we have here off the coast of the US. Sophie collects seawater samples in mile intervals to check for differences in the number and types of phytoplankton. We have um, these bottles that we can leave open but trigger them at different depths to trap the water. So that's the rosette sampler. So we spent about five or six days working really hard, just sampling like crazy. However, we can only learn about phytoplankton diversity of a small patch of the ocean through local sampling and observation. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of sampling going on, but the ocean is so huge, it's, we haven't even covered a fraction of it yet. What I think about my work is that it's really going to feed into probably refining climate models and ocean models and ecology. Using experimental data, such as those from Sophie's cruise, Andrew Barton is mapping phytoplankton diversity worldwide. He models the global environment and conducts virtual experiments on a computer simulated ocean. Climate change, for instance, is very much a global scale question. Um, how does the subpolar ocean behave differently than the subtropical ocean behave differently than the Arctic Ocean? So these large-scale ecosystems are connected to large-scale global processes. And, and so we use computers to um, basically simulate the physical environment in the ocean and then the biology and the chemistry, and then we run experiments. This animation shows the physical underpinnings that, upon which we lay the ecological model. So using this physical model, then we add on the chemical and biological models. These are constrained by laboratory and real-world observations about the physiology of the organisms. And so in this animation, we have the dominant type. We add them everywhere, spin up the model, and then the ecosystem evolves and natural selection and competition determine who survives and who doesn't, and that varies in time and space. The team has created the model that successfully predicted the growth pattern of phytoplankton. The next question is, how will populations of phytoplankton respond to a warmer Earth? It's totally unknown. Uh, this is why we're doing it. For instance, you say, let's increase the temperature of the Earth slowly over 100 years, and we want to see how the biology and chemistry respond. That's a really fundamental question that we need to answer. It is a long way before we go from understanding phytoplankton diversity to regulating climate change. But scientists at the Darwin Project made an important first step to a better understanding of the ocean around us. We're moving more and more towards sort of scientifically using models for all sorts of things. I mean, especially in terms of climate change and climate prediction, models are invaluable. We can't really do anything without them.